Welcome back to First Sound, presented by Inside the Pylon. My name is Mark Schofield, one of the writers at Inside the Pylon, and today I'm taking another look at progression reads, examining California quarterback Jared Goff as he works through the Y-cross concept. This play is a staple of the air raid offensive scheme that has its origins with Lavelle Edwards in his days at Brigham Young University, and now is being run by coaches such as Mike Leach and Sonny Dykes. This play design gives the quarterback anywhere from three to five progression reads on the play, depending on the formation, the personnel, and whether the running back or backs on the field have pass protection responsibilities. What you see on your screen right now is a playbook look at this play, and I've adapted it from Coach Noel Mazzone's Passing Concepts Playbook. Coach Mazzone is now the offensive coordinator at UCLA. In that book that I've got, he takes you through a number of variations of the Y cross concept and this is what you see here what golf will be running on the play in question as you can see the quarterback lines up in the shotgun with 20 offensive personnel meaning personnel meaning two running backs and three wide receivers the offense has slot formation on the right side of the field over here slot receiver here flanker there and a single receiver is split to the left wide over here Working from left to right, we'll start with that X receiver on this side of the field. He's going to run a go route, as you can see. And I've got the coaching points in here for this play for each of the interested actors. The X receiver must close the cushion on the defensive back as soon as he can. That's his first responsibility. Whether the defensive back is in off man or press coverage, he needs to erase that cushion first. If that cornerback is in press coverage, he needs to bend this to the outside try to draw him towards the outside because one that will give the quarterback a better throwing window if he comes to this go route and it will also pull that cornerback this way a bit away from the primary target of the play which is that crossing route next let's talk about that crossing route as you can see from the coaching point it's a 10 to 18 yard cross meaning you start your bend at 10 and you're aiming to get to a depth of about 18 yards aiming for the opposite numbers the receiver running this route is going to try to release under the Sam or strong side linebacker. So you bend under him first, and then you're going to get behind the Mike linebacker, or sometimes that will be the Will or weak side linebacker if it's simply a two linebacker front. You're going to push vertical to 10, then break across, aiming for that 18 yard depth at the far numbers, and you're going to try to find some grass, find some open area on the field to make yourself available for the quarterback. Finally, let's look at this route. This is the Z receiver running this sort of backside curl. He will push vertically and then again sit in the open grass and try to work back to the quarterback. Quarterback's responsibilities on this play, since there are three routes to choose from, are as follows. First, he's going to peak the go route. And what that means is he's going to take a quick look at that vertical route from the X receiver and see if he can make a quick play down the field in the vertical passing game. If that isn't there, his next read is that crossing route from Y. Try to find him in some open space near those numbers, which should be vacated by that plate side cornerback. Finally, if that's covered, then you come to that third read, which is that deep curl pattern run by Z. Here's the play in question run by California and Jared Goff. Now, this is a play in their game against USC that Matt Waldman and I spent some time talking about on a recent RSP film room session. I'd invite you to check that out. We spent a lot of time on this play, but given the design, the scheme, the concepts covered in it, I wanted to take a little bit more time to dive into it deeper. Looking at the context for this play and the information available to Goff before he makes his decision. California faces a second and two with the football near midfield and a tie game late in the second quarter against the Trojans. The football is on the right hash mark, and as you can see and would probably expect from the playbook shot, Goff is in the shotgun with 20 personnel with slot formation to the right and a single receiver split to the left. USC has a 4-3 defense on the field. They'll show Goff cover two before the play. Both safeties are deep. You can't see them, but you can see their shadows to the right of the screen. There is a press corner to the top of the screen over that X receiver, which means that that receiver needs to release to the outside on his vertical route. The other cornerback looks to be an off-man or catch-man technique. He's a few yards off the line of scrimmage away from the receiver. And as you can see, the play, draw, 
play art is drawn in. You've got the three passing routes. Both running backs on this play have pass protection responsibilities. Goff will fake a handoff of the mesh point. Both running backs will stay in to block. Let's run through this play, keeping it at half speed, and show you how Goff works through his progressions here. Okay. After the fake, you can see Goff immediately wheels his head to the left, as expected, to peak that go route. He's trying to see if he can make that quick throw on that vertical route to the X receiver. The quarterback looks to be in good position here. He's maintained good relationship with the receiver. He's upfield of him, and he looks to be in good position to take away the vertical route. And with a safety lurking deep in this too deep coverage, it's probably not the best place to put the football. So Goff quickly comes off of that. Now he's reading that crossing route. Again, the crossing route here is his primary read. And let's just make a quick note on the difference between a primary read and a first read. Lots of plays have what they call a primary read, which is the intended target of the play. Here, that's that crossing route from the slot receiver. Next time you're playing Madden and you pull up your play art, that's going to be the route that's drawn in in red. That's where you want to go with the football. But plays also have sometimes have a first read built in, typically a deeper pattern where you might be able to take advantage of a mismatch or a good situation or a receiver that just wins a one-on-one -on -one battle against coverage and you can make a play deep in the passing game. That's what's built in here, that quick read, that peak to the go route. Goff's going to look there first, but that's not his primary read on the play. His primary intended target is that crossing route. And that's what Goff has come back to here. He's scanning the field to see if he can make a throw to that slot receiver on the crossing route. But it's covered, so he comes to option three, that curl route. And he puts in the throw at a place where only that receiver can make a play on the football. When you talk about ball placement, this is a great example of ball placement because you second and nine, you need to convert, move the chains. So he puts the football in a place where only the receiver can catch it. As you can see, there's a number of defenders in the area, and we'll get another look at this in a second. But he puts the football where the receiver can go to the turf, secure the catch, and move the chains. This is a conservative throw, but it's a good throw placed well in the situation. Here we go from the end zone angle. As you can see the coverage here, you've got the three underneath defenders here, here, and here, as well as the two high safeties. These are the primary impediments to throw in that cross route, as we'll see. Goff takes the snap, and again, he looks outside to that vertical route. He's got his eyes trained out here. But again, as we can see, that route is covered well. The cornerback is in great position out here. He's maintained great leverage on the receiver. And with that safety lurk in here, that would be a tight throw to a contested receiver, probably not the best decision to make. So now it's time to look at option two, the primary target here, that crossing route. There he is right there, as you can see in the circle. He tries to get under that play side linebacker, and he does. Again, that's his first task as he's running that route. But you can see now, as Goff starts to come away, you can see why. You've got the other two linebackers are in great position to take away that crossing route. Again, you've now got the free safe, the, that play side safety there. So that's another tough throw in window to try to complete that play. But now, coming back to his third read, you can see that curl route starting to break open. The safety is there, but he's deep. He's maintained too deep leverage on him. So there's an, a window to get that ball in. The cornerback is lurking here. This is that other linebacker, the strong side linebacker. But again, there's a clear throwing lane, and this is a very good option to take here. It's his third read but it's the best one given the coverage and the flow of the play. There's another very good look at this sort of like throwing lane that Goff has to choose from. You can see, again, three defenders right there, but there's the receiver with nobody in front of him. So the best place to put this ball is to 
put it low, but right on the receiver. Don't try to lead him one way or the other. Just let him sit right there, sit in the open grass, and make the play. And that's exactly what Dolph does, delivering a nicely thrown ball. This play is a great example of what Goff can do when asked to make some progression reads. You can see his familiarity with the offensive concept that's on display here, his ability to work from his first read to that primary read, then to the third option on the play, which is that curl route. He shows great understanding of the defensive coverage and the situation and the, rep the respective positions of all the defenders on the field. You can tell that this is not the first time that Goff has been asked to make a progression read, particularly on this play. And you can be sure that it won't be the last time we'll be asked to make a progression read in his football career. Thank you for listening to this edition of First Sound. If you'd like to read more, please check out our site at InsideThePylon.com for our articles, our glossary, and much, much more football content. Thank you.